So let's see what is a parallel axis theorem. So if I talk about the parallel axis theorem, consider a body like this, okay? So the general thing is that you have to find the moment of inertia about an axis. And from the name itself, you would have got some kind of a hint that has to do something with parallel lines, correct? Okay, so what is this parallel axis theorem? Now, this is a theorem which is not new to you. Probably you must have done it in your school. But understanding, understanding that how do you apply this theorem? What is the meaning of this theorem is very, very important, right? So consider a body like this of mass m, right? So if I say that the moment of inertia about center of mass is known to us and find the moment of inertia about this axis, I'm sure now the concept of axis is absolutely clear. So when I say that this is the axis, you can immediately imagine that how the rotation is taking place. I'm sure of that, right? So if for a body having mass m, if you know the value of moment of inertia about its center of mass, then if I ask you, what is the moment of inertia of this body about this axis, about this axis, we can name this axis anything, okay? What is the value of moment of inertia about this axis? Now, what is the condition on that axis? So you have got two axes over here. One is the natural axis of the body, which is passing through the center of mass and perpendicular to the plane in this particular case, right? Another one is this particular, this particular guy, right? So in this case, what is the relation between the two axes? What is the relation between the two axes? Think about it. What is the relation between the two axes? What do you see? What do you see? is that these are two parallel lines. Yes, these are two parallel lines. So hence, parallel axis theorem. Hence, the name parallel axis theorem. So you have got two axes and both the axes has to be parallel to each other. Clear? Clear with the name? So you have got two axes. Of course, for, for saying that something is parallel to another thing, you need at least two things, right? So you're saying that there are two axes and these two axes are parallel to each other, clear? But there is a condition on one of the axes. What is that condition? The condition is that this axis or one axis must be passing through the point of center of mass. One axis must be passing through the point of center of mass, yes. And another axis has to be parallel another axis has to be parallel. So you can see that in this case, this axis is passing through the point of center of mass, right? And another axis about which you want to find the value of moment of inertia for that, well, you have that this axis and this axis are parallel to each other. And the condition is that one axis must be passing through the center of mass. Then what we can write, we can write, I, that is moment of inertia about this particular axis, this particular axis, okay, let me just name it as y, y dash, okay? So moment of inertia about y, y dash, this axis is equal to moment of inertia about its center of mass, moment of inertia about its center of mass. And why is this very, very important? Because most of the cases for regular bodies, we know the value of moment of inertia of center of mass. And at this point of time, let me request you something. If you have not by hearted the formulas of standard bodies, what is the value of uh, the moment of inertia for standard bodies? This point of time, I would request you kindly take your NCRT book, all right? And there will be a table which is given, a tabular form, right? And all the values of all the formulas of moment of inertia are written over there, right? Don't go into derivation part of it. It is going to consume a lot of time, all right? So keep that in front of you for now and once you practice enough number of problems trust me well you will get it uh, you'll, you'll just memorize it. it it becomes very simple once you see all these formulas it becomes difficult but if you you know practice it number of times write it in numericals number of times then probably you will get it okay then it will be very very simple what is the moment of inertia of a disk about its center right? Very simple, mr squared by 2. What is the value of moment of inertia of a ring about its center for an axis which is passing through the center of mass? Well, it is equal to mr squared. So this is how you get it, all right? So you don't have to just go on mugging it up, but keep that list right in front of you so that you are able to apply in the problems, okay? So moment of inertia about its center of mass plus 
एम डी स्क्वाड एम डी स्क्वाड ओके वॉट इज दिस डी डी इज द परपेंडिकुलर डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द टू एक्सेस डी इज द परपेंडिकुलर डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द टू एक्सेस एंड वॉट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ एम एम इज द टोटल मास ऑफ द बॉडी एम इज द टोटल मास ऑफ द बॉडी डिड यू गेट दिस इजी राइट इजी सो मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया ऑफ अ बॉडी नाउ अंडरस्टैंड द स्टेटमेंट मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया ऑफ अ बॉडी अबाउट एन एक्सेस पैरल टू एन एक्सेस पासिंग थ्रू इट्स सेंटर ऑफ मास Again, I'm reading it slowly. Try understanding and decoding each and every word. Moment of inertia of a body about an axis parallel to about an axis parallel to an axis passing through its center of mass and separated by a perpendicular distance d is given by i is equal to i c o m plus m d square. Clear. easy okay now how you can think about it simple so this is a body and you know the formula of moment of inertia about its center of mass very easy then you imagine that this body is nothing but a point mass and where is it located it is located at its point of center of mass now if you remember the formula if there is a axis like this and there is a small mass m over here which is at a distance of r or d in this case from the particular axis right from a particular axis what is the moment of inertia about this particular axis for this mass well we know the formula i is equal to mr square where r was the perpendicular distance right so i is equal to md square that is the moment of inertia had this been a point mass but is it a point mass it's not a point mass right so you have to add moment of inertia about its center of mass as well it's an extended body right so it is going to have a moment of inertia of its own so what is the moment of inertia of a particular body about an axis which is parallel to another axis which is passing through the center of mass of the body it is equal to the moment of inertia of that body about its center of mass plus i'll assume the entire mass to be concentrated at the point of center of mass and then i'll consider this distance the perpendicular distance so plus m times d squared is this expression clear is the parallel axis theorem clear isn't this very easy and very simple 